pattern. You can see here, this is why when you get something like this, you can see now that if I were to do this, if I were to try to solve this for w, and then substitute into here, and then solve for x, and then substitute into here, and I have to substitute what I had for w into here as well, this would be a write off mess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in the augmented matrix. So let's see, so the first equation is going to be the first row. The coefficient on w is 1. The coefficient on x is 2. The coefficient on y is minus 1. The coefficient on z is 5. And that is equal to 16. So that gives me my first row. My second row, I've got 3 times w plus 2 times x minus y plus 4 times z is 14. And now for the third row, I've got 5 times w times 6 times x minus 2y plus 14z is 49. And then for the last row, let's see, w, and I've got to be careful here. So this is what, w, x, y, z. And let's see, the coefficient on w is minus 1. The coefficient on x is minus 2. Now there's coefficient on 0, sorry, on y is 0, because it's 0 times y since there's no y's. And the coefficient on z is minus 5. And that's all equal to minus 19. So this is going to be our augmented matrix. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this. But basically, I'm going to do row operations. So I'm going to use this number right here. And I'm going to try to take a row, row operation for this to put a 0 there, and do a row operation here to put a 0 there, and a row operation there to put a 0 there. Once I do that, then I can just focus on this, and I'm going to repeat. I'm going to do row operations, get a 0 there and a 0, and just keep going down the line and see what happens. All right, so let's see what happens. So here's my augmented matrix. Oh, boy, this is going to be fun. So let's see, I'm going to leave the top row alone. Now, if I multiply... I'm going to take a times row 1 plus row 2. And I, want, I know I want to get a 0 there. So let's see. So if I take a times this row, I'm going to have a times 1 and plus 3 is 0. So that means a has to be minus 3. So let me come back over here and redo this. So what do I have? I'm going to have minus 3, that's ugly, minus 3 row 1 plus row 2. So if I do that, I'm going to have minus 3 times 1. Let me get rid of these so I don't confuse these for negative numbers. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm using a times row 1 plus row 2. A is minus 3, so minus 3 times 1 plus 3 is 0. I already knew that was going to happen. Uh, let's see, minus 3 times 2 plus 2 is minus 6 plus 2, so that's a minus 4. Now I'm going to do these two, minus 3 times minus 1, minus 1, so that's 3 minus 1 is 2. Now I'm going to do these. So I have minus 3 times 5 plus 4. So what, minus 15 plus 4 is minus 11. Let me check my work I did in advance here. So everything looks good. Now I'm going to do this. So that's what, 3 times 16, I'm sorry, minus 3 times 16 plus 14. And that's what, minus 34. Now I'm going to basically do exactly the same thing. I'm going to use row 1. So let me get rid of all this stuff. I want to now use row 1 to be a 0 there. So my goal now is I want 
to have a zero there by taking a times row one plus row three, because I'm now working across row three. So let's see, so if I do that, I'm gonna have three times one plus five, oops, sorry, it's not three, that's a equals zero, so a is minus five. So minus five times one plus five is zero. Minus five times two plus six, so that's minus four. Okay. Now I'm gonna have, let's see, minus five times minus one, minus two, so that's five minus two, sorry, yeah, five minus two is three. And now I'm going to have minus 5 times 5 plus 14. So that's what minus 25 plus 14 is minus 11. Yeah, this is where it starts getting messy. Now using these two, minus 5 times 16 plus 49 is minus 31. Okay. So the key thing here is to figure out what times one plus five is zero. And then once you make that decision, you're gonna go through and change this equation. So the original equation was what, five w plus six x minus two y plus 14 z is 49. If I take minus five times the first equation plus this equation, it's now minus four y, sorry, minus four x plus three y minus 11 z is minus 31 and there's no w in this. So just as a reminder, we had w, x, y, z, and this is the constant. Okay, and I'm going to do it one last time here. So I want a zero there. So let's, now we're basically starting all over. Each time you do this, it's like starting over. So now this is going to be what? a times r1 plus r4. So a times 1 is that. Minus one I know is zero, so a is one. Okay, so that gives me, if I take one times one minus one, I'm gonna get zero. And again, I knew that was gonna happen. One times two, minus two is zero, so I'm gonna get a zero there. Let's see, that's gonna be one times minus one, plus zero is minus one. And now one times five, Minus five is going to give me zero. And then finally here, I'm going to have, uh, let's see, one times 16 minus 19 is minus three. So I get that, okay? So after these row operations, what do I have? I have that, sorry. Uh, my system of equations now looks like this. And what I can do now, let's get rid of all the scratch work. Okay, so by doing these row operations, by taking combinations of these rows, basically all the second, third, fourth equations do not depend on W. If I can solve using these three equations for X, Y, and Z, I can come back later and calculate W by using this. So let's do that. Um, so now I'm going to basically ignore the top row. I'm going to focus on these three equations, so rows two, three, and four. And I'm going to now use this number here to get zeros everywhere below. Okay, so basically I'm doing exactly what I just did before only I'm just ignoring the top row, and I'm pretending that this is now my top row. Okay, So let's see, how am I going to do that? Let me rewrite this, because it's a mess. So I've got 1, 2, minus 1, 5. I'm going to leave that row alone. 16. I'm going to not change the second row. All right, so the second row says that, um, 
The second row says that minus 4x plus 2y minus 11z is minus 34. Okay, I know there's going to be zeros there and zeros there. I now want to have a zero there. My goal is to have a zero there by using the second and third rows. So what am I going to do? I'm going to use a times row 2 plus row 3 and do that in order to get a zero there. So let's see if I take a times minus 4 and add a minus 4. I know I need to get zeros. I add 4 to both sides, divide by minus 4, so that's going to work if a is minus 1. So let's see, so basically right here now, this is going to be minus row 2. So let's see, so I take minus a minus 4, I get 4, minus 4 gives me a 0, minus 2 plus 3, gives me a 1. Okay. Let's see. Minus a minus 11. Minus 11. So I'm taking minus a minus 11 plus a minus 11. Gives me 0. So there's a 0 there. And then finally i got to use these two. So minus a minus 34. Minus 31. Oh what, 34 minus 31, so that's going to be 3. Now note here, there's already a 0 there, so I don't need to do anything. I'm just going to leave that alone. My goal was to put a 0 there and there. Since that's already a 0, I'm just going to stop and do nothing with that. So that becomes 0, minus 1, 0, minus 3. Okay. All right, so now... I'm basically going to start over and do the same thing. Let me get rid of all this scratch work. And what I'm going to do is, so let's see, I'm now I've got my first row sorted out, my second row sorted out, my third row is now sorted out. I'm going to now use my third row and try to get a zero underneath that first place where I see a non-zero thing. And I'm going to try to make a zero there. Okay, so I'm basically going to basically go down the column starting at row two. All right, again, this is a mess. Let me rewrite this. So what do I have? I've got one, two, minus one, five, sixteen. That's the first row I leave alone. Take the second row and leave it alone. Let me line that up a little better. That's going to be hard to follow later. So that's on 11, minus 34. I'm going to leave the third row alone now. And now I want to make a zero here. And I know I'm going to get zeros there. So let's see, so what am I going to do? I'm going to take a times row 3 plus row 4. And I want to figure out an a that will make a zero there. So how do I do that? So that's going to be a times 1 minus 1. I know I want to be 0. So if I solve that, it basically says that a equals 1. So if a equals 1, I'm going to have 1 times 0 plus 0 is 0. 1 times 3 plus a minus 3 is 0. So my augmented matrix is now in this form. So let me rewrite that. If I do that, what do I have? I have 1, 2, minus 1, 5 is equal to 16. I have minus 4, 2, minus 11 is minus 34. I have 0, 0, 1, 0 is 3. I have 0, 0, 0, 0 is 0. Okay. Whew. Now, what do we have? This system of equations here is exactly the same as this, it's just written in a different form. I've basically done the substitutions and row operations to put this in a nicer form. This is what's called row echelon form. Oops, row echelon form. 
How do I know that? If I go down and I look at each row, so for, for a given row, I come across here, I find the first thing that's non-zero, everything below it is zero. So if I do that and I come down to here, this is my first non-zero thing, everything below it is zero. Here, this is the first non-zero thing, every below, thing below is zero. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, is if there's any rows with all zeros, they're down at the bottom. And the final thing is this, is that if I now start from the bottom and go up, if I look at the first thing that's non-zero here, okay, then there's nothing going to be uh, to the left of it for anything below. So for example, let's look at this one. This is my first non-zero entry in the second row. If I look below and look at everything to the left, everything to the left is going to be zeros as well as everything directly below. Okay. So why is this wonderful? So let's just keep in mind, what do we have? Again, this is for the W variable, this is for the X, Y, and Z. I'm going to start down at the bottom and work my way up. Now notice I started from the top and worked my way down. And in doing that, I can now interpret this bottom row. This bottom row says that 0w plus 0x plus 0y plus 0z equals 0. So it says 0 equals 0. Good news. Okay? It's a true statement. Can't, can't argue with that. Can't do anything with it, but it's correct. Let's go and now look at what this row says. This row says 0 times w plus 0 times x plus 1 times y plus 0 times z equals 3. Okay? So I now have that y has to be 3. Now notice, there's no restriction on what z can be yet. Right? I don't know what the heck is going on with z. So, so far, z could be anything. I don't know. All right, so now that was the, I took the fourth row, the third row, now I'm going to look at the second row. What does this say? This says 0 times w minus 4 times x plus 2 times y minus 11z is minus 34. I already know that y has to be 3. So this is what? Minus 4x plus 6 minus 11z equals minus 34. Now let's see. This is my first non-zero entry here. Notice this is what I use to make zeros below it. This is called the pivot row. So when we got to the row second, row two, I should say this is the pivot column. This is the, the variable I use to make zeros. We're going to call that the pivot. And what I'm going to do at each step is I'm going to solve for the pivot. So if I solve this, what do I have? I have minus 4x equals minus 34 minus 6 plus 11z. So that's going to be what? Minus 40 plus 11z. If I divide both sides by minus 4, I'm going to get 10 minus 11 fourths z. Oops. Sorry about that. So now let me rewrite that, clean that up a bit. So x is 10 minus 11 fourths z. So I now know what's going on with z, y, and x. I can now use the top row to get w. So what that says? That says w plus 2x minus y plus 5z is 16. This was my pivot. So I'm going to solve for w. W is minus 2x plus y minus 5z plus 16. So I subtracted 2x, added y, subtracted 5z from both sides. I know what x is now. So I plug in from there. I know what y is, so I plug in from there. And I don't know what z is. Let's clean that up. I'll get minus 20 
plus 11 halves z. So this is going to be 3 plus 16 is 19 minus 5z. So let's see, minus 20 plus 19 is minus 1. So this is going to be what? Minus 10 halves. So this is going to be plus 1 half z. So let's clean up all this. Rewrite it. So I have that w is minus 1 plus 1 half z. And that's the solution. Oops. Maybe I do that. That's my solution to this system of equations. Now notice, I have no idea what z is. And because z is free for me to interpret, you give me a value of z that uniquely determines y, x, and w. So there's basically infinite solutions. And for any number z, this will define the solution in terms of x, y, and w. Okay? So basically there's infinite solutions. For any z, this gives me my solution. Okay. Um, so now it's important to note that in terms of my solutions, I have infinite solutions. Now we've seen before that we can have situations where there's no solutions. And what will happen there is if I get a row of all zeros here, but then something non-zero there, that would basically say 0 equals whatever's there. Suppose this is 5. If I get a row that says 0 equals 5, then that means there's no way I can make all of these, uh, uh, all of these equations uh, add up in a consistent way. So it's very important for you to be able to look at this matrix right here and interpret what it means. If you, get a, um, if you have four unknowns and you only have three rows or two rows or one rows with, that are not all zero, that means you're going to have infinite solutions. Okay? And also if you have a row with all zeros except for not something not zero in that last column, that means you have no solutions. And you have to be able to look at this and know when it's in reduced to row echelon form. So if we give you something like this on a quiz or test, you need to be able to tell us what it means. So if we give you this and say this is reduced, or sorry, row echelon form, you should be able to tell us how to interpret that. Okay. <laughs>